Hey friends, Doug here with uh, finally another trailer update video. Uh, it's been about three weeks, I think, since the last one that I did. Um, it's not that I haven't been working on things, I just have been inc incredibly busy. Um, not only working on the trailer, but I've had other things going on. I've uh, also shot, I think, four events since the last time I did one of these videos. And uh, yeah, we've definitely taken a turn for the worse on the weather here in Utah. Uh, this last Sunday, temperature drops, temperatures. Average temperature dropped by 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, we had some snow. And so I knew that was coming, and I spent Thursday, Friday, Saturday last week just working on the trailer. That's kind of what I did full full time for three days in a row. So I made some good progress. Um, some of it's not necessarily so visible, but I'll kind of go over some of that stuff. So I think in the last video, the thing we left off on was audio. So I just kind of start there, mark work my back into the audio booth. Just kind of take a gander here. So last time I had finished, or at least started, the equipment rack, and that's now functional. Uh, it's it's working. Um, I have been doing audio here in the trailer, running audio through the audio booth in the trailer for the last several events that we've done. So I mentioned last time about the Behringer multi-band compressor is up there. Um, that thing has been a godsend uh, in order to make sure that audio levels are in check. Uh, I think it's a great job of that. Um, let's see, come down a little further, you can see that the monitors are now hooked up and functional. And I've got this monitor showing um, a nice little graph there of audio level and phase, and show up to 16 channels of audio level. Um, I'm trying to keep the audio level around minus 20, although I'll let it get up to say minus 12 or so. And that seems to be a, a nice, healthy level that uh, allows a little bit of headroom. Of course, when, when somebody else is doing audio and you're just tapping in, you're really at their mercy to a large degree uh, about what they're sending you. But that's one of the main reasons that I got the, the Behringer compressor uh, years and years ago, because it does a great job of handling the transients that, uh, that, that come your way when somebody, when you have an audio guy who is either afraid of compressors or, or doesn't know how to use them. So just a, a real quick overview of uh, what's going on here with this particular mixer. Uh, this mixer is really only connected uh, to the speakers here in the audio booth. Uh, the, the, uh, its output doesn't go anywhere else. So it, it doesn't go out to the switcher, it doesn't go to any other speakers that are, this is just for the audio booth itself. Uh, and what I've got connected here on channels 15 and 16, that's actually where I have the output of the switcher itself. So this is, Channel 15 and 16, let me hear exactly what it is that's going out live. Um, if there's any distortion or anything like that on that final output, for whatever reason, I'll be able to hear that on, on, this, on this output here, or this input here. Uh, next to it on channels 13 and 14, that's actually the control room output from the mixer down here. So if I need to, to solo a particular source or whatever, I can come up here mute 15 and 16, turn on 13 and 14, and get an idea. Uh, I can I listen to an isolated source. Um, the other thing that um, I still need to address, but I can, I've kind of come up with a temporary solution here. Uh, the final output of the compressor, it only goes to the switcher. It doesn't go to uh, the mixer at all. Um, you know, back in the days of analog mixers, we very often had a main insert that we could insert a compressor for the final output stage. With the uh, move to digital mixers, those have all but gone away. They're nearly extinct. And so there's that compressed signal out of my Behringer compressor never goes through the mixer at all, which makes it difficult to, to monitor and, and hear what's going on unless I output, or unless I listen to the output of the switcher, which is basically what I try to do most of the time. And so uh, normally listen to 15 and 16 and then only switch over to the control room feed when I need to listen to a soloed source or whatever. So uh, the other source that I've got connected right here uh, on channels 1 and 2 is the intercom within the trailer. So uh, I can listen to what the director's doing, what the director's, and, you know, what the director's saying uh, or anybody else on intercom, which is very, very helpful, especially if I'm if I happen to be running a PTZ camera while I'm here back in the audio booth. So um, there also is a set of connections here uh, for 
for intercom and so in the audio booth I can also uh, just talk to, talk back to everybody there as well uh, but having having that intercom feed come into this mixer means I can I can mix it into um, what I was into on the speakers here and and uh, be able to work on the mix while at the same time being able to get direction from the director um, so yeah there's that uh, this monitor here um, its its source is routable so I can send any signal that I want here but the intent with this one is to generally speaking have the final program output on here and then that also carries over to the second monitor which is being used as a scope for audio uh, so under normal circumstances those would always be prog the program feed and so you can always glance up and see what's on program what's currently on program and then make sure your audio levels and your phase are currently all in check up there um, so I'm gonna come down a little further so the the main monitor um, for the audio booth is in there and working right now I've got it set to a multi view uh, won't normally be uh, doing a multi view um, for the, these last several events, I've been doing audio and PTZ camera control. And in order to do audio, pretty much have to be at this booth. And since most of the other, other functions of the trailer can move, I elect to just bring the Xbox controller for PTZ and, and, and put it back here. And what I'll typically do on that, I'll put the, the PTZ active PTZ camera up here on the upper left. The, the software for the control for the camera down there. Uh, the multi-view from the switcher down here and the program feed down here in the lower right and so that gives me a pretty good idea of what's going on uh, normally if, if there's a dedicated audio guy um, they can either watch the program feed on that monitor or what I would recommend in most situations would be a just a static wide view of uh, whatever venue we're shooting and so the audio guy can really see what's going on because otherwise he's at the mercy of whatever uh, camera happens to be live and if there's something going on off camera the audio guy might not be able to see hey hey I need to, I need to turn on uh, the microphone the red microphone and having that wide view uh, would allow that the nice thing about that is I can I can always do 4k on that wide view uh, regardless of what resolution we happen to be shooting the event in so the guy can, audio guy can get a nice sharp view of what's really going on and get a better idea of what needs, to, what needs to happen with, in terms of creating the audio mix. I'm gonna come down a little further. Uh, Personas Mixer, I believe I had that actually in here last time. Uh, right now, I've got channels one through eight set up for left and right from cameras one through four, although I can change that. Those come in through these Cat5 cables uh, coming out of the wall here. Um, and then nine, nine, 10, 11, 12 come from the patch bay. I don't remember which channel specifically, but and then 13, 14 are coming from my iPhone. And then 15 and 16, 15 and 16 here uh, are the monitor mix from, from the ATEM software. So whichever, whichever one of these I happen to have selected, that allows me to send one source. Uh, it's coming in at SDI to the mixer very easily. Um, the other thing I can do, um, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it, but Back up inside here, yeah, you're not gonna be able to see it. There's a, a Blackmagic uh, SDI to audio 4K device, which allows me to bring four channels of audio in. And those are currently patched into uh, channels 9, 10, 11, and 12 on the mixer. Uh, although I can I can move those around by, by repatching on the patch bay up here. Um, so on the other end, that's where I would set up my Behringer X-Air mixer. Uh, to create a mix and then I'd use the four channels um, on coming out of the mixer so left right main and then left right um, basically the control room outputs um, on the other uh, use those four audio sources run those into a, a black magic uh, audio to SDI and then send those over just one of the camera feeds embed those in one of the camera feeds since SDI carries 16 channels of audio I can very easily stick four channels in any of the camera feeds and bring those in to the audio booth. Uh, that would allow me to create, since I'd have the X Air mixer in the venue, I'd be able to create a mix there. And I thought if I'm gonna be doing that for a little while before I can actually get my Yamaha TF3 mixer, I might as well have a good way to control it. So 
I went and bought this uh, Behringer X, X Touch Universal, and this controls those X Air mixers really well. So these are uh, touch sensitive faders. Um, can control all the channels of the mixer. Can control like 95% of the functionality of the mixer from from this uh, control panel, and that op operates over Ethernet, which of course I, I already have. And so uh, normally that wouldn't be here. I just stuck that right here um, until I figure out a nice slick mounting solution in the audio booth. I'd probably find some way to stick it up here. I don't. Know. I haven't decided. But again, that's not that's not permanent because uh, at some point I will be getting that Yamaha TF3. And, and so both, both this Personas and that Behringer uh, control service will be replaced by a single mixer using audio over Dante. The other thing going on here in the audio booth is a touchscreen monitor. So in this case, I've got the uh, Blackmagic ATEM software loaded, uh, but I can certainly also load the Behringer X-Air edit software to remotely control the mixer that way as well. So I've got a couple different ways be able to uh, exhibit control over over the mixer. So he, even though the, the audio is actually functional and, and mostly complete at this point, there are still a couple little quirks that I'm still trying to trying to resolve. Um, there's an, a, a hum, it's like a 60 hertz hum on a, at least a couple of the audio lines. And then the audio lines that I've got coming in for the cameras from the studio converters are for some reason really, really noisy. Um, and not like in those no, in case, in that case, it's not it's not the 60 hertz hum. It's just a really loud hiss, you know, like just a, it's like they're using noisy electronics. Um, I turn down the gain, it's fine. Um, but in both cases, I thought there may be some issue with something being induced into the line, because uh, you know I am running those signals over Cat5 and ungrounded at, at that. Uh, instead of running over a dedicated audio cable, but I did try running um, high quality XLRs uh, and the, the noise was still there in both cases. So still trying to get that resolved. I thought it might be, you know, I thought for a second it might be a ground loop, but then I realized I'm not running a ground on these. They're, they're floating already. So I'm still trying to figure exactly what the problem is there and get it resolved. Um, as a last resort, I may, may just try running new audio lines entirely for, for the most critical of those. Oh, I haven't done that just yet to see what's going on. The noise isn't so bad that it's really noticeable in the final output. Um, if you were to watch any of the streams that I've done in the last couple of weeks, you can't really hear it, but I know that it's there and it bugs me. And so I'm trying to get that resolved. Um, for speakers right now, I'm using an ancient Cambridge Audio amplifier. It's a 5.1 channel along with the, the uh, speakers go along with it. So center channel, left, uh, right, and then I'm going to stuck the surround speakers up here just because, you know, why not? Uh, normally I, I just operate it in two channel mode. Um, it's actually it's actually got pretty good sound quality for the size. Um, it's kind of un unfortunate that Cambridge, Cambridge Audio got out of that market because I think they were, were doing a pretty good thing. I think these sound quite a bit better than the bows that they were competing against. Of course, these are not, not final, and just, just some speakers that I, I had laying around. Um, I may, before too long, upgrade to some, some uh, flat panel speakers that I've got, um, mount those up top uh, until I can afford to get the Gen Lex that I, that I plan to get at some point. Uh, so, but anyway, for the type of mixing that we're doing in here, this is this is plenty fine. We're not doing high quality, super super high quality stuff. All right. Um, while we're in the back, the other thing I wanted to mention is I've decided to build one more shelf um, up up top here. Right now, I just got these cable protectors up in there, and I haven't put the actual shelf in there, but I've got the frame there, so uh, that shelf will be about four feet wide and allow me to to store some things out of the way, some longer things out of the way. I can put tripods up there and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, although I do try to limit how much weight I put in the back at this point, just to keep the trailer from getting imbalanced. All right, um, over here on what is the right side of the trailer, and you've probably already caught this, I did build this desk. Uh, the top of the desk itself is definitely temporary, and this left leg is probably also temporary as well. Um, but this is the this is basically the final 
final desk is going to look like. Uh, it'll just be a nicer quality wood. Uh, so you can see here that I've got some com uh, computer uh, keyboards and mice set up. Um, these are functional at the moment. Uh, although this doesn't complain, doesn't control that. It controls the computer that's up here. Uh, and then, then this one does control this one here. Um, and then over here where this mixer is, that would normally be my engineering station. This monitor will come down off the wall. I haven't done it yet. It'll come down off the wall and go here. And then that will be the keyboard that I actually use while I'm sitting there. So, so my station, I'll have the main equipment rack behind me, a video monitor to my right, and then a computer monitor uh, in front of me. And that computer is actually this server station that's here. And so I'll have um, quite a bit of processing power at my disposal, more, more than anybody else. Um, one of the other things that I decided to do, let me get better, some better light. Uh, one thing I decided to do was uh, to put a video capture card, a video a SDI video capture card into that computer. I haven't received it yet, but I did order it. And I'll use that for just uh, capturing and monitoring video uh, signals. Uh, it'll, it won't be a primary capture device, but it'll be more like, I need to, like if you saw one of my previous videos where I talked about mat making cameras match by uh, using a color chart and then my whatmath.com website, I need some place to capture that video uh, in order to make that happen. And that, from this point forward, will happen back at my engineer station. Um, speaking of capture, uh, I've also installed the Ultra Studio 4K. It goes under the desk here, and then the Thunderbolt cable comes up to the top. Uh, that's primarily, primarily going to be run off of a laptop. Um, I'm going to use that for not just titles, but also for, for play out. Um, I found that one of the most reliable ways to do play out is actually to play video straight off the timeline in Premiere. Um, can do cool things like chaining a bunch of videos together and, and you don't have to worry about uh, rendering to a very specific codec for play out on another device. So you basically just drop all the clips on the timeline and the computer I'm using to do that is, is plenty fast to do any necessary scaling or codec conversion or whatever in real time. So it's really just a matter of dropping the files that I want on the timeline and tapping the space bar to go. And so yeah, that Ultra Studio, there is the computer interface that I'm using that I'm going to be using in order to get video um, into the switcher and whatnot. Um, my computer has a Thunderbolt 3 port. So yet that device has a Thunderbolt 2, so, so I've got this Cable Matters converter here, and that does work pretty well. Um, about three weeks ago, I bought a brand new Dell XPS 15 laptop for doing video, because my other laptops that I've been using just are not even remotely capable of handling 4K video. And so I decided to upgrade my laptop. My prior lap that I, laptop that I've been using was kind of a mid-range model that I've had for four years. And so it was probably time to, to do an upgrade there. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, just a couple of other little things. Uh, got some power outlets installed here in the front. Those are working. I've got those all wired up, ready to go. Decided to clean up the wiring over here a little bit. Uh, previously, there was a USB hub coming out of the, the Surface Pro, and then the output of that hub would go into, well, I had an Ethernet, so that pl would plug in here, and then the, and there was a, a USB connection here to go to the touchscreen monitor. And I decided I wanted to do less cabling, so I actually moved the hub back inside, and so now we just have one USB cable that goes in there, and then the Ethernet connects back, back, back inside. And then my X keys controller now plugs directly into a USB port right on the panel. And there's also an, a sec, a, another USB port there that I can plug in um, a USB thumb drive or whatever. So um, in addition to that, there is actually a USB hub on this monitor as well, so I can plug in other things there as well. So, um, so anyway, that's kind of where we stand for the moment. Um, I'm close to being able to carpet, uh, carpet the walls at this point. Um, that's going to be a fun adventure because I get to pull all the monitors down, 
remove the, de the, de the desk tops. And then uh, I'm going to be using a glue to, to adhere the carpet to the walls. And so that's going to be pretty time consuming. I've got, I've got some people that have volunteered to help, and so that'll be extremely helpful. Um, I do have to, I am going to have to find a warmer day to do that just because we're going to be coming and going. A lot of times carpet needs to be warm for it to stretch properly. And so uh, I may have to wait for the warmest day we have coming. Uh, I have not purchased the carpet yet, but I can do that at any point. So, uh, so anyway, I, this, I know this is a longer video, but uh, I have done quite a bit. Um, I've even done quite a bit of cleanup. You know, things, things are not... Things are not quite as messy as they were. Uh, things are looking a little bit better, um, so which is nice because you, know, you want to make a good impression. Uh, the customers, potential customers that have seen the trailer, are just wowed. They're super excited by this, and you know that's very encouraging. Uh, I don't have as much business going on as I want uh, in terms of uh, sh uh, shooting video, and so to have people excited to, about what I'm doing. Uh, it's, it's, it's really nice, so I'm pleased by that. Um, anyway, so that's kind of it for now. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below, and I'll try to answer those as best I can. Uh, also, be sure and like and subscribe. Uh, another thing you guys can do to help out would be to, to use some of the links in the descriptions of the videos to purchase stuff. Uh, can't think of anything. Can't think of things specifically that I've bought you with, with the uh, money that I've made off of those affiliate links. But, but some of the things that I've I've purchased for the trailer have come directly from those affiliate uh, contributions that you guys are making. So I appreciate anything you guys are doing there to help me. But um, so anyway, that's all for now. And uh, yeah, do do uh, share, uh, like, and subscribe. And appreciate you watching. All right, thanks. Bye.